Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to stage A. <coughs> stage A? Stage C. Stage C. Wrong stage. Um, can I introduce you to Dan, who's going to talk about what Di Walt Disney and what was meant to be the future? Hello. I'm Dan, and this is Epcot. Uh, it's the second of the Walt Disney World theme parks, and I think it's the most boring theme park in the world. So I thought I'd tell you all about it. It's themed as a permanent world's fair. More volume. It's themed as a permanent world fair. It's split into two parts, a world showcase with pavilions for every country and a future world. The world showcase has pavilions for different countries, little pastiche recreations of different places. There's the United Kingdom, which has a pub, a fish and chip shop, and most importantly of all, a merchandise shop selling keep calm and carry on mugs. In the bottom of the park, you have Future World. You can tell it's Future World because it has a monorail. There, you can do exciting things like visit a hydroponic garden. That's pretty much it. Um, and there's kind of two main reasons why I find Epcot frustrating. The first is a World's Fair acts as a snapshot for a specific year, a specific point in time. And Epcot is a snapshot of 1982. I'm not particularly interested in going on holiday to 1982. <laughs> But secondly is the name. Epcot stands for the Experimental Prototype City of Tomorrow. It was never meant to be a theme park. In its original design, it was meant to be an entire city built by Walt Disney. Walt Disney decided that American cities were incredibly broken. They were full of crime, poverty, and that he was the one who could solve this. He'd kind of seen run-down amusement parks and gone, well, I can build one of those better and built Disneyland. Uh, he'd seen animated kids' films and thought, I could do that better and had built better animated films. Um, so he thought a city is pretty much the same problem. So to do this, he bought a patch of land in Florida. It's an area twice the size of Manhattan. Um, it's probably the distance of uh, Bristol to Bath from one end to the other. It's kind of 54 times the length of Western Supermare Pier for scale. Um, and his plan was that he would build a theme park at the top to lure people in, build a city in the middle, and an airport to the south with a monorail collecting them all. To buy this land, he used uh, a number of shell companies and lawyers uh, kind of w who weren't associated with the Disney company to anonymously buy this land without anyone figuring out what was going on. He used the uh, company that later went on to launder the money for the Bay of Pigs invasion, kind of ex-CIA people, uh, really underhand stuff. He even had to buy the mining rights for the land because that was owned separately from the landowners. And this meant that later on, after he built his theme park, someone could turn up the drilling rig and just go for it in the middle of the park. <laughs> so his plan was to build a from scratch modernist utopia. It would be concentric in the center. There would be sit, um, shops, restaurants, offices, uh, all under a glass roof, fully air conditioned, separate from the elements. He would run his own public transport infrastructure. He'd have monorails for long distance travel, podcasts that would take you wherever you wanted. Underground would be where the cars are hidden. And underneath that, a service tunnel with uh, the lorries for deliveries to places. So you'd never have to encounter traffic as a pedestrian. On the outside, he would build parks and schools in a green belt. And then outside that would be suburbia with the houses where everyone would live. And you wouldn't own your house, you'd rent your house from Disney. Disney would kind of choose what electrical appliances you had so he could experiment and try the best things for your home. They built a massive model to simulate it. They'd kind of uh, gotten quite far in the planning stages. They even got as far as to uh, announce it to the public with this half an hour long film kind of uh, selling the citizens of Florida on television this utopian vision for the future. And, but sadly, uh, a few days after announcing the project, Walt Disney was diagnosed with lung cancer. He was a heavy cigarette smoker, and the city was never built. Instead, they went ahead with just building the theme park, um, which they still outfitted the, modern, uh, the most modern technology they could. This is the Contemporary Hotel. It's a prefabricated concrete A-frame structure where each of the rooms is a different module that's been craned in and swapped out to complete so that no maintenance is carried out on site. And you can tell it's futuristic because it's got a monorail running through it. 
The entire theme park is built on the thirst ground of a massive structure called the Utilidors. There are a series of concrete corridors, service structures, so that staff can get around the park without being seen. On the ceiling are these tubes called AVACs. They suck pneumatically the rubbish from rubbish bins around the park so that nobody sees the staff emptying the bins. They even run their own power grid and their own telephone network. If you've ever tried to get BT to install a landline, you'd probably realize it's quicker to build your own phone company. <laughs> And they can do this because technically they're a city. Even though Epcot never got built, the legislation got passed, which formed um, the Reedy Creek Improvement District. It's a, a special legal structure, roughly equivalent to a city council, and it contains two cities, including the city of Lake Buena Vista. This means it has all the powers and rights of a city. It can run a police force, it runs ambulance services, fire service, it can open a court, it can run a jail, it can appoint judges, it can run hospitals. It's even got permission to run its own nuclear power station. And it's also got the responsibilities of the city, so it has to hold elections. But the way it's structured is only landowners in the area can uh, take part in the elections, which are 16 Disney employees who are given special little houses purely for the sake of voting. This means that Disney never has to deal with a, a, a government that isn't in its interests, which is helpful because it applies for planning permission from itself. Um, so when Disney passed away, they, they searched his office and they found he only owned one architecture book in all his planning to build a city, and it was a book by Victor Gruen. Victor Gruen turns out to be the inventor of the shopping mall, this kind of perfect glass-covered, air-conditioned city. Uh, already exists. We already have these utopian cities. It's just, it turns out they don't fix the problems of cities by building a glass dome over the roof and opening some Nando's. Um, and that's pretty much all I have. Sorry. <laughs> I should say, Walt Disney World did later on go ahead and build its own town. It was a kind of um, uh, basically a suburban sprawl of villas. Uh, but they built it not because they wanted to build an utopian city, but because the land that they owned was so vast and had become so valuable because of Disney World, it meant that someone could buy the entire of the Disney Corporation, sell off all of the film assets, not care about those, not care about the theme parks, and just build hotels and houses and make a massive profit. So they built an entire town and annexed it off into uh, Orange County outside of its own jurisdiction to prevent someone creating a takeover of the Disney Corporation for real estate purposes. It's a quite a ridiculous structure. Anyway, thank you. <laughs>